So we see here in this table that for given n's, when n is 1, f of n is 12. When n is 2, f of n is 5. When n is 3, f of n is negative 2. When n is 4, f of n is negative 9. And so one way to think about it is this function f is defining a sequence where the first term of this sequence is 12. The second term of the sequence is 5. The third term of the sequence is negative 2. The fourth term of the sequence is negative 9. And it goes on and on and on. And you might notice that it's an arithmetic sequence. We start with a 12, and then the next term, what have we done? We've subtracted 7. Now to go from the second to the third term, what do we do? We subtract 7. So each term is 7 less than the term before it. Now with that out of the way, see if you can define this function, this function of n, if you can define it explicitly. So figure out a, a, a function definition. So I want to figure out f of n is equal. I want you to figure out what this needs to be so that if you input n here, it gives you the appropriate f of n. So let's think about it a little bit. It's going to be, we could think of it as we're starting at, the t first term is going to be 12. But then we are going to subtract, we're going to subtract 7. And what are we going to subtract 7? How many times are we going to subtract 7? So for the first term, we subtract 7 zero times, and so we just get 12. For the second term, we subtract 7 once. For the third term, we subtract 7 twice, one, two times. For the fourth term, we subtract 7 three times. So it looks like whatever term we're on, we're subtracting 7, n minus 1, the, we're subtracting 7, whatever term we're on, that term minus 1 times. So it's n minus 1 times. And let's see if this actually works out. So f of 1 is going to be 12 minus 7 times 1 minus 1, that's 0. So that's all just going to be 12. f of 2 is going to be 12 minus 7 times 2 minus 1. So we're going to sub so it's going to be 12 minus 7 times 1 or we're just going to subtract 7 once which is exactly the case. We start at 12 and we subtract 7 once. f of 3 you can keep testing this 12 minus and we should have to subtract 7 twice. And we see 3 minus 1 is 2 times. So we're going to subtract 7 2 times. So this looks right on. We've defined the function explicitly uh, we've defined f explicitly for this sequence. Let's do another example here. So in this case, we have some function definitions already here. So you have your sequence. You could, it's kind of viewed in this table, or you could view it as the first term is negative 100, next term is negative 50, next term is 0, next term is 50. And it's very clear that this is also an arithmetic sequence. We're starting at negative 100, and then what are we doing here? We're adding 50, and then we're adding 50. And then we are adding 50. So each term is 50 more than the term before it. And what I want you to do is pause the video and think about which of these definitions of the function f are correct. And it might be more than one. All right, so let's, let's think about it. So this definition right over here, one way to think about it is saying, OK, I'm going to start at negative 100. And I'm going to add 50 n minus 1 times. Does this make sense? Well, for the first term, we're going to, if we start at negative 100, we don't want to add 50 at all. We want to add 50 zero times. And it works out, because 1 minus 1 is going to be a 0. So it checks out for n equals 1. Let's see, for n equals 2, you start at negative 100. I want to add 50 once. So I want to add, I want to add 50 once. So this should be a 1. 2 minus 1, yep, it's a 1. We're adding 50, whatever this number is, whatever n is, we're adding 50 one less that number, that number of times. So for here, we're adding 50 twice. For when n is 4, we're adding 50 three times. And this one checks out. When n is 4, we're adding 50, 4 minus 1, three times. Negative 100 plus 50 times 3, we're adding 50 three times. Adding 50 one, two, three times, well, that gives you 50. So I like this one. Now let's see about this one over here. Negative 150 plus 50n. All right, that's one way of saying, so let's see, if we n is equal to 1, it's going to be negative, let me, actually let me draw a table for this one. So if we have n and we have f of n, and this is going to be for this character right over here. So if n is 1, it's going to be negative 150 plus 50, which is negative, which is negative 100. Yep, that checks out. 
When n is 2, we get negative 150 plus 50 times 2. 50 times 2, which is going to be, this is 100, and then it's negative 150. This is going to be negative 50. When n is 3, and that checks out, of course. When n is 3, you get negative 150 plus 50 times 3, which is equal to 0. This checks out. This one over here is going to work. And you might say, well, hey, these formulas look different. But you can algebraically manipulate them to see that they're the, the, that, to see that they are the exact same thing. If you were to take this first one, it's negative 100 plus, let's distribute this 50, plus 50n plus 50n minus 50, minus 50. Well, negative 100 minus 50, that's negative 150, and then you have plus 50n. So these are algebraically the exact same definition for our function. Now what about this one here? Negative 100 plus 50n, does this one work? Well, let's see, when n is equal to 1, this would be negative 100 plus 50, which is negative 50. Well, no, this doesn't work. We need to get a negative 100 here. So this one is not, not correct.